In this video I'm going to show you how to make a marker buoy, or buoy if you prefer. There are a few different scenarios where you might want to use one of these. One is if you're in strong current and you have a specific position, maybe a rock, a ledge you want to hit, and it's difficult when you're in the water if you're doing long drifts, it's sometimes difficult to actually hit that point. You can get a boaty to go and sit on it and wait and stay there as you drift towards it. Um, but sometimes that's not practical if it's quite windy. Um, so that you may, to have a marker in the water, you can see the flag, you can move yourself and time your dive ahead of the marker buoy so you actually come down before it. Um, another scenario which is um, quite useful is when there's a deep wreck perhaps and you want to be able to hit a point and the visibility doesn't allow for that. So you can set the marker buoy, the boaty can not have to sit right in amongst everyone and you can just follow the rig line down to the wreck or cave or whatever it is. Okay so I'm just going to show you what I think you need in order to do this. So I'm just going to show you what you need in order to make this. I've done this out of the cheapest materials so it doesn't cost a lot. Um, so you're going to need a float. This is a crab pot float. It's about 200 millimeters diameter. Now it's, it's fairly light, not too expensive. Um, and we will paint that. You're going to need a PVC pipe. This is about 25 millimeters. Um, it's about one inch. So that will actually fit in here. So what we will have is a float with a flag on it, which is one of these safety flags. That's just for towing vehicles that you put on the back of the, the um, towing vehicle so people can see it. Um, I'm going to take that off and I will attach it here. Um, but we'll get to that. So in order to attach the flag, we'll use some cable ties. I will use a couple of nails. I'm just going to blunt in the tips and that, that will stop the float from sliding. Once we've positioned it, I'll just put these through, whack them in tight. It will stop the float from moving. Going to need a couple of other things. A eye bolt, another little bolt. Um, I'll show you what that's for. A shark clip, which will attach to the eye bolt, um, like so, and some weight now, which we'll put in the bottom. We'll weight the bottom of this so that it stands up. And you can use these lead sinkers, lead weights, the fishing sinkers. They'll actually fit. They will fit in here, like so. I'm going to whack them in. Um, you, you can use those, you've got a lot of those, or you can actually just, we've got a three pound weight here, I don't use pounds, I use metric weights now, so um, I can hacksaw through that and whack it in, it's quite heavy, if I take a couple of ch chunks off that and whack it in there, it'll be pretty, pretty good. Um, and I also might use one of these as the weight for actually on the, on the reef, because you just tie a rope to it, and I don't want it to actually get caught, but that should be pretty good for that. I um, also need a rig line. So I've got a couple of old rig lines that I don't use anymore. Um, these are, uh, one's 20 meters I think, one's 10. That's about 60 odd feet, maybe uh, 30 odd feet. Um, these are roughly sliced up. So the benefit of that is when I get, wherever the center is, you know, they're connected somewhere, is you can actually just push it through and then clip it off. So if I was diving, in shallower water on a point I wanted to mark, I could push that through, clip it off, leave the extra 10 meters just floating, tied up, and that would shorten the, the actual marker point to the float, which is better rather than having a long flat or well away from it if you're in shallow water. So I, it'll give me a couple of lengths to play with there, which would be quite useful. Um, I've got some paint, I'm gonna go orange, because um, white is terrible. <laughs> If, if you're getting rough seas. Um, Alright, so I'm going to get stuck in and I won't show you me drilling holes, but I'll, I'll show you the finished product and then talk you through it. Okay, so I have the finished product. And as you can see, I've spray painted it up nice and orange. Uh, the flag has been attached with cable ties. They're just drilled through and then the holes drilled in the flag. Um, there were two nails, which I spoke about, that I've used. I've just whacked them through just with some small holes and that's pretty tight. Like, Stops the float from moving too much. Um, the eye bolt is here and I've attached the clip. 
and just tied that off. So this will clip onto the rig line at different points depending on the depth that I'm diving. Um, from this point down here, I've filled it up with lead and I've just got a small bolt just stopping the lead from sliding out. Um, the idea, if, if, there, if this wasn't self-correcting, if it kept getting if it was in a knockdown and it wasn't self-riding, uh, you can just add more weight, maybe slide this up more or just smash more weight in there with a the hammer and that will actually just give it enough because it, it actually, you can see, the weight is just dropping it like that. So it should be okay. Um, the other thing, other thing to note is the reason for this eye bolt being here is if you put it on the end and you're in strong current, the actual current would pull the float down and the flag would not be standing upright. That's why I have it here. So hopefully, even if it's in current, it'll lean a bit, but this will kind of be swiveling like that. So that should be waving the flag, which is exactly what I want. And this whole thing is pretty cheap to make. It didn't take me long. There's only a couple of holes you have to drill. Um, and it's not complicated. So yeah, hopefully it helps mark the spot. X marks the spot equals more fish.